have they created an environment, have they laid the found work to, foundation to really move forward? Well, uh, first of all, I thought Josh was pretty positive uh, in his uh, remarks, and he's been around a long time. I have a lot of respect for his views. Um, you know, there have been a lot of distractions, uh, a lot of the things that they've tried to do on regulations and the regulatory agenda, including bills that have been passed through the Congress, I think is very helpful. Uh, a lot of discussion about the tax bill, uh, and a lot of excitement about that, and I did, there are positive signs economically. But I think they, they've got to begin to move some legislation. The Congress is a part of this package. And I worked over the years with seven different presidents, and every one of them comes to town, and they bring their home state people, whether it's California, Texas, Georgia, Arkansas, and they think they're going to you know, pretty much run the town. Well, they find out pretty quickly <laughs> there is a co-equal branch of government, which can be pretty difficult to herd, whether it's cats or whatever. So they. Uh, there are some positive things that can happen, but they're going to have to find a way to begin to uh, fill up the, the post in the administration more that are open, and they're going to have to move some legislation. Well, so you make an interesting point that if you look back in the first 100 days, the things that they've had the most accomplishments were are actually unilateral actions, whether it's firing some Tomahawk missiles into Syria or whether it's deregulation or executive orders. But it's been yet to be proved, maybe you say, that he can work well with others, and particularly Congress. Well, the, the best sign, of course, and, and Republicans feel this way, and conservatives, was the Supreme Court uh, selection and the process, which, uh, you know, was unsettling in a way to me, because I hated to see him have to go ahead and pull the so-called nuclear trigger to just require uh, 51 votes and not have a filibuster. But that was a, a significant thing, and, and uh, the Senate handled it, I thought, overall pretty well. So, Senator Daschle, what's your evaluation? You've seen it work, you've seen it not work so well. How are they doing? Well, David, I, I think Joshua is right in terms of the executive actions that the president has taken. He's, uh, he's been aggressive. Presidents, uh, when they can't get their way on Capitol Hill, often do things unilaterally. President Obama was, was criticized for the executive actions that he took, and so I, I'm not surprised that, uh, that President Trump would do that as well. But I think there's a law of physics in Washington that will always be there. The only permanent legislation is bipartisan legislation. We saw that with the ACA. It was passed without a Republican vote. What have we seen for the last seven years? Republican efforts to repeal. It. Now the Republicans, in my view, are making the same mistake the Democrats did in not bringing about the kind of bipartisan consensus on health care that is really possible. There, there is a pathway to bipartisanship. That's true on taxes. That's true on infrastructure. That's true on trade. There are a lot of issues that we could resolve, but instead of just doing it unilaterally, they've got to reach out and, and, and create the bipartisan consensus to make it permanent. Well, to your point, the last time we saw a really fundamental tax reform, 1980, it was bipartisan. Absolutely. Bill Bradley, among other people, crossed exactly. the aisle and really worked with them on it. Well, Danny Rostenkowski, who was chairman Dan of the Dan Rostenkowski, I mean, exactly was, right. It was, but, and by the way, even though it was bipartisan and a and pretty good achievement, it was difficult. Uh, there was a lot two of time. Years. Yeah, two years to get that bill done. And that's the point. It was difficult, Senator Daschle, in 1986. Is it even possible now? Because I think some of what we saw in the election was the American people saying, we're not sure Washington can work at all. Well, there is a lot of skepticism for a good reason. I mean, look at that. It's been 30 years since we've passed a major tax reform. You know, we've amended the tax bill of 86 over 10,000 times. I did not know that. And, and, uh, and so we've got a mishmash that really has to be addressed. Yeah. But it's going to be difficult. It's going to take time. And I think it's going to take both parties. But I do think uh, that infrastructure and uh, if it's broad-based tax reform, both of those could be bipartisan. I mean, Democrats and no Republicans question. do think we need to do something about our, our roads and our bridges and our airports and our water and sewer. You know, we've got bad water in Jackson, Mississippi, not just Clint, uh, Flint, Michigan. So uh, that's a place where they could uh, get some uh, real bipartisan effort. Same thing on the tax bill. Uh, I would hope that uh, the tax people that are going to be in the key positions would cross the aisle and sit down and, and talk to, to Chuck Schumer or to Ron Wyden and say, what, what is it you really would like to see here, or what do you really don't want to see? And see if they can't begin to, to get that kind of cooperation. But one, I didn't want to talk about the executive orders. Over the years, executive orders have been increasing with every president, partially mm -hmm. because Congress won't act. Uh, and that, right. I, don't, I think that leads to sort of an imperial presidency, which I don't like. I, uh, but the answer is for Congress to act. Mm -hmm. Then at least it's permanent.